I'm done with drinking alcohol. I'm done with drinking culture. And I'm done with turning a blind eye to the horrific effects it's having on our society and our loved ones. Today I want to talk to you about the psychology of alcohol consumption, how it affects your brain and how it affects your behaviour. Let's start with some statistics. Worldwide, 3 million deaths every year result from the harmful use of alcohol, which represents 5% of all deaths. I repeat, 5% of all deaths. That percentage goes up for the age group 20 to 39, aka my age group, where it rises from 5.3% to 13.5%. 13.5% of all deaths. Okay, so every year a lot of people die from alcohol, but what about serious injury? Well, let's talk about it. In the UK, 13 to 15% of all A&E attendances are alcohol related. That translates to 1.1 million people becoming so injured from the effects of alcohol that they have to be sent to hospital in an ambulance. To put that number of people in perspective, if you took every single football stadium in the Premier League, filled them to capacity, and then dropped a bomb on every single one so that everyone in that stadium became injured enough that they had to be taken to hospital in an ambulance, that would still be less than the total number of people who actually go to hospital because of alcohol. And in 2020, almost half of all violent crime was committed in a situation where the victim thought that the offender was under the influence of alcohol. Which means half of all victims of violent crime who suffer the long-term physical and psychological damage of the crime that was committed could be avoided if alcohol was simply not present in the situation. These statistics should shock you. They certainly shocked me. But then that begs the question, why does this happen? What is it that alcohol is doing to the brain that leads us to be violent, careless and just downright a danger to ourselves and each other. Well, as alcohol expert David Nutt said, alcohol is a really clever drug. Alcohol is a very promiscuous drug. It, it gets into the brain and it changes all the good neurotransmitters that you want to change, you know, a bit of endorphin, a bit of serotonin, a bit of GABA, you know, it's a, it's a really clever drug. And the combined effects of all of these hormonal changes leads to a frightening alteration in your brain's ability to function properly. Let's break it down by brain region. Firstly, the entire cerebral cortex. This huge wrinkly outer layer to our brain is where so much information processing occurs. The information from our eyes, ears, nose and other senses all become dramatically impaired under the effects of alcohol. This is also the part of the brain most involved in planning, deliberate action and indeed good judgment. Which means that under the effects of alcohol and the impairment of your cerebral cortex, your ability to understand what's going on around you and your ability to use that information in order to come to reasonable conclusions and judgments is severely impaired. Next, let's talk about the cerebellum, otherwise known as the little brain. This is the part of the brain which is heavily associated with movement and balance, which is why when under the influence of alcohol, people tend to lose their balance, they can't walk in a straight line, and very often fall over and seriously injure themselves. Next, let's talk about the hypothalamus and the pituitary. These two areas of the brain work together to regulate your hormones. When you consume alcohol, the alcohol acts as a depressant on the nerve centers of this part of the brain, meaning that your hormonal control goes completely out of balance. This is the main reason why people appear to have many different types of drunk. Because it's these nerve centers that control your hormones, this is what leads to the variation of drunk people being extremely happy, extremely sad, extremely sexually aroused or extremely scared. The truth of the matter is, is that under the influence of alcohol, your ability to regulate your emotions is severely, severely impaired. And finally, let's talk about the medulla. The medulla controls many of the homeostatic functions of your body, including breathing, body temperature, and sleepiness, which is why people tend to pass out when they have too much alcohol. But it's also the reason why people who drink too much alcohol can die from hypothermia, or they can simply stop breathing altogether. The medulla is the part of your brain that keeps your body doing the things it needs to do in order to keep you alive. And under the influence of alcohol, the medulla's ability to take care of you is severely impaired, which is why people die. In combination, the effects of all this altered brain activity leads to a lethal combination of unregulated emotions, unstable movement, and very poor judgment. And all of this seems like good fun and really funny until it's not. Until someone that you know, someone that you love, gets hurt. So that's why I'm going to total, meaning I never intend to drink alcohol ever again. And I want to encourage you watching this video to come join me. And if just avoiding the downsides of alcohol that I just talked about wasn't convincing enough, let me give you a few more reasons to go teetotal. Number one, sobriety is trendy. 
Data from across the world, including here in the UK, is showing that since alcohol's peak in the mid-2000s, alcohol consumption amongst young people has been dropping sharply. Young people these days are simply drinking less than ever, with more and more people choosing to completely abstain like myself. So let's not all be relics of the past, and let's embrace a safe and sober future. Number two, there are lots of great alternatives. From sparkling elderflower drinks served in wine bottles to 0% beers, and now even alcohol-free beverages that use botanical remedies to still give you a bit of a buzz without any of the poor judgment, hangover, or dehydration. These drinks taste great, look great, and also don't give you any of the poor downsides that I talked about earlier, which personally I think is pretty cool. And number three, loads of A-list celebrities are teetotal. Natalie Portman, Jennifer Lopez, Tom Cruise, Samuel L. Jackson, and even Cristiano Ronaldo himself all don't drink alcohol, as well as a whole bunch of others. So I don't know about you, but I reckon a sober party with all of those people would still be pretty lit. So those are the reasons why I'm never drinking alcohol again. I encourage you to go teetotal with me, or at least to be very mindful of how much you're drinking, what effect it's having on your health, your brain, your behavior, and the people around you. Let's all stay safe. I'm gonna be talking more about this topic in the future, but until then, see you next time. Bye-bye. If you want to learn more about the science of alcohol, how it's affecting your health, your mind, and your behavior, I highly recommend reading the book Drink by Professor David Nutt. This video is not sponsored by this book, it's just a book that I've been reading personally and has really helped me in understanding my relationship with alcohol. I'll leave a link to the book in the description. I get no money from you buying the book, I just really want people to read it.